If you've been diagnosed with SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, and were told to just take antibiotics and move on, well, this video is here to tell you why that probably didn't work, may have made things worse, and what you really need to know to fix the problem for good. Hi there, I'm Dr. Springer, author of The Gut Connection, and welcome to our channel, where we explore all things gut because your gut is a major control center for your whole body. Now, more than 30 million people in the U.S. have been diagnosed with SIBO, and likely millions more have it without knowing. That's because diagnosing it isn't exactly straightforward. The symptoms of SIBO overlap with a bunch of other gut issues, and the most common test, a breath test, can be wildly inaccurate. Many experts now question how useful it even is, and unfortunately, that means more antibiotics are often prescribed when they may not be needed or helpful. Another common misstep? Conventional medicine often treats SIBO like a side effect of something else, like IBS or even obesity, when in fact SIBO may be the root cause of those issues. And the longer it sticks around, the more damage it can do, not just to your digestion, but your entire body. So yes, it's annoying, but it can also be serious. Let's unravel the mystery of SIBO, what it is, what causes it, and why treating it isn't as simple as popping a pill. What exactly is SIBO? SIBO stands for small intestine bacterial overgrowth, and that name tells you the problem. Bacteria that are supposed to live in the large intestine end up setting up shop in the small intestine. Normally, your gut microbiome is a balanced ecosystem of bacteria, yeast, viruses, and even the occasional parasite, all living in harmony. But when that balance breaks, some bugs overgrow, others die off, and the whole system spirals. One of the outcomes? SIBO. And keep in mind, your digestive system works like a team. Trouble in one area can easily spill into another. So when things go sideways in the large intestine, that microbial chaos can creep upward into the small intestine, causing SIBO and a domino effect of other issues. What causes SIBO? Let's break down the real triggers behind SIBO, because, spoiler alert, it's not just bad luck or IBS. 1. Diet. Modern diets are basically a buffet for gut imbalances. Here are the major offenders. Processed foods and drinks. These foods are high in sugar, sugar substitutes, and chemical additives that disrupt your gut flora. Seed oils like soybean and canola. This food group is loaded with linoleic acid, which inflames your gut lining. Unfortunately, the same fat is found in all nuts, seeds, and their oils. Low fiber diets starve good bacteria, but be careful. Adding fiber too early when you already have SIBO, that's like throwing gasoline on a bonfire. Inflammatory foods like wheat, beans, nuts, and even spinach can irritate your gut since they're loaded with lectins, oxalates, or sprayed with glyphosate, a herbicide that kills off beneficial bacteria. 2. Food Sensitivities Leaky gut is often a component of SIBO and allows undigested food particles into your bloodstream. Your immune system freaks out, sees those foods as enemies, and launches an attack the next time you eat them, creating inflammation and worsening SIBO. 3. Lifestyle and Stress Alcohol and tobacco are obvious gut offenders, but chronic stress? It's sneakier. It lowers your gut's natural immune shield, secretory IgA, which makes your intestinal lining more vulnerable to invaders. 4. Medications. Medications may come with friendly names, but your gut isn't fooled. Antibiotics. They wipe out the bad guys and the good guys. That leaves room for yeast and other unwanted guests to overgrow. Antacids. Lower stomach acid, which throws off the pH of your entire digestive system. That slows digestion, weakens enzyme function, and allows bacteria to flourish where they shouldn't. Result? You guessed it. SIBO. And often constipation, too, which only feeds the cycle. So, those are the major culprits behind SIBO. And as you've probably noticed, they're the same culprits behind a lot of other gut and health issues, too. Coming up in part two, we'll look at the symptoms of SIBO, how to properly diagnose it, and most importantly, how to actually fix it without wrecking the rest of your gut in the process. So, if you're ready to get to the bottom of this, be sure to check out part two. And if you found this helpful so far, please like, comment, and subscribe so we can keep bringing you gut-transforming content. I'll see you in part two.